Hello and welcome to Mary Live. This is Dr. Mark Mirvali. My friends in Jesus and Mary, there is the much expected solar eclipse, which is approaching us on April 8th. It is also on the moved liturgical feast of the Annunciation. Uh, for those who have not viewed uh, the solar eclipse in Mary part one and solar eclipse part uh, in Mary part two, you're certainly welcome to do so by going to motherofallpeoples.com or we uh, try to discuss with a little bit more um, commentary the significance of uh, Mary as the moon uh, because Jesus is the sun and Mary reflects the light of the moon. Uh, the whole uh, relevance of Revelations 12 that it is the woman clothed with the sun that's doing uh, cosmic battle with the dragon for uh, verse 17, the rest of her offspring, which means you and me. And, and the significance of these events, uh, we talked about the uh, Nineveh uh, line of seven cities that will be either in the total or partial eclipse. Uh, and so again, you're certainly welcome to uh, take a look at those earlier videos. Uh, I would just say, you know, some have uh, commented that, well, you know, the cities of Nineveh in the United States, and again, for those uh, unaware, uh, the eclipse will go through uh, some seven cities named Nineveh in the United States. And some have said, well, but they're not all in total eclipse. Some are in partial eclipse. Uh, I think that might be missing the bigger picture. The bigger picture is uh, almost like a St. Andrew's cross, the crossing point of the 2017 uh, solar eclipse. Uh, which one, you know, I'll, I won't do it this way because it'll be opposite for you, but essentially from uh, southeast to northwest, and now this eclipse going from southwest to northeast, it really uh, makes a type of St. Andrew's cross uh, over our country, a black cross over our country. As I mentioned in the second video, uh, again, motherofallpeoples.com has those if you're interested. Uh, there is a, what has been tragically called an abortion haven, very close to the intersecting point uh, near Carbondale, uh, Illinois, uh, which serves abortions uh, for some five states with um, less, uh, uh, with, with more restrictive abortion laws than Illinois has. And therefore, even the train system has rearranged itself to make this available for really uh, travails of death, uh, going and, and having uh, children, um, you get the picture, um, the, the, the travesty of what an abortion is in essentially killing a child in a very violent fashion. And so, uh, but some have said, well, it's not exactly, you know, on the line, it's just slightly off the line, but, you know, the, the fact of seven uh, cities being named Nineveh and uh, even an eighth in Nova Scotia, there's only one city in Canada with that name. There's seven in our country. Uh, I think this bespeaks uh, an important reference. I think this is a call. I think the, the call of Nineveh, the call of Jonah for Nineveh, is very much the call uh, of Our Lady for our country. Uh, there is the serious need of conversion. Uh, we have the added factor now of what's called the Devil's uh, Comet, which comes around every 70 years, evidently. And again, this is all based on um, the scientific data uh, that's, that's freely given. And the fact that that's also going to be visible, this Devil's Comet. Why is it called the Devil's Comet? Because at certain stages of its development, it, it appears to have horns on it. And so it's been named the Devil's Comet. Well, that's also going to be visible on April 8th on the Feast of the Initiation. So uh, that's a lot of symbolism. But let's do this, my friends. Let's go, let's use Pascal's wager. Let's say none of it is supernatural. None of it is uh, of symbolic value. What does that leave us? It leaves us with the reality that the United States is in serious need of conversion, with or without uh, what I believe to be uh, true indications of heaven trying to speak to us through uh, the sun and the moon and the stars, as the prophet Joel says, as Jesus himself says uh, in Luke when he's talking about signs of the times, that heaven does speak to humanity uh, in celestial signs. And if in fact that's not the case, 
uh, if, if this is all just massive, uh, rather almost irrational, uh, coincidence, uh, it doesn't take away the fact that the United States is a leading center of abortion. It is a major benefactor of human trafficking. And tragically, and that's, I think, the appropriate word, uh, it is also a real center and a strong supporter of transgender tragedy. Uh, it's interesting that on April 8th, uh, the Vatican has announced that it will release a document that will deal with um, the infinite dignity of humanity, dignita infinita, uh, just announced that it will be released on the Feast of the Annunciation. It will talk about social issues, but it will also talk about moral issues, including uh, the tragedy of transgenderism and this, even the transgender ideology trying to say there's no difference between man and woman. And we have had the added, um, I, th I think blas blasphemy is a, is a legitimate um, modifier in talking about having a you know, transgender visibility day announced by our administration uh, on the day of the resurrection on Easter. Uh, this, my friends, is not love. To encourage people in error is simply not love. Here's our Christian mandate. We can never confirm error, even if it is for charitable intentions. But ultimately, it's not love to say it's okay for you to do serious harm to your bodies and to take medication uh, that can cause serious side effects uh, and to be really enslaved by this medication to prevent the natural hormones that God has put into your body, all because you don't feel loved. That's the root of this. Let's be honest. The root is you don't feel special. A person that does a sex change surgery is saying to the world, that's the real visibility, not really the nonsense that came from the White House. The real visibility is these people don't feel loved. And we who are not battling this particular challenge have to recognize that and say, how can we love you more? But it's not loving to say, go ahead and do a surgery which will cast such existential suffering to your being, which is already deeply saying, I do not feel special. And therefore, I'm going to do something to the exterior of my body to help me feel special. And ultimately, it's always only going to make things exponentially worse. No, transgender visibility is not love. Love is telling the truth. A man is a man. A woman is a woman made by God that way. And each of them have such incredible, each of us have such incredible, unique gifts. The specialness was entered into your being when you were created by God the Father himself, who is the master of unique specialness for every single one of his children. And so abortion and human trafficking and a leadership role in, in transgenderism, this calls for conversion. And indeed, if we do not respond to mercy, we shouldn't be surprised if God responds with justice. And let me mention this too about April 8th. Now, there's a lot of speculation going on, understandably. But if we're going to follow the biblical pattern of sign leading to then some time for conversion, and then if there's conversion, like we see in Nineveh, Great grace and blessing. If there's not conversion, then justice. Just remember that biblical kind of formula. Well, if you're going to apply that biblical formula in any way to our present situation, and even specifically to April 8th, I would not expect a great event of chastisement to happen on April 8th. Uh, this has been uh, speculated by some, and of course, speculation is fair. I'm simply uh, throwing into the mixture... I think odds are very small that it's going to happen on the day of the sign. Why? Because the purpose of the sign is to then awaken our consciences so that we can do something about it before 
the 40 days of Nineveh prophecy uh, happens. Remember, Jonah says, you know, 40 days and Nineveh will be no more. Uh, and of course, from the top down, from the top down, the king of Nineveh orders, and again, these are the Assyrians, the, the major enemies of northern Israel. And a Jewish prophet comes in and says this. And they respond historically, remarkably, with amazement, uh, which would cause us uh, amazement, because from the top down, they convert. And so that's why 40 days after, Nona, uh, Noah, uh, excuse me, after Jonah comes, there is not a massive chastisement. Well, my friends, uh, in the United States in particular, and this, of course, is true of Western Europe, I think in general, we can, we can clearly uh, attribute this, it's not going to come from the top down. That's what we found out on Easter Sunday. We're not going to get a top-down call to conversion in the United States. That means it's going to have to be from the bottom up. Who's that? That's me and you. From the bottom up, we're going to have to affect, to whatever degree we can, a conversion in the United States. And again, let's do it the little flower way. We don't have to think of big ways, although big ways are great. It's a little way, starting in our hearts, starting in our families, things like more consistent daily praying of the rosary, uh, Eucharistic holy hours. If you can go to daily mass uh, to offer that as part of conversion for our country, as I suggested in the previous video, thinking of Wednesday and Fridays as perpetual days of giving something up. It doesn't have to be a strict fast, even giving up, again, meats uh, or, or treats or even social media. Um, ask Our Lady. She will guide your heart on how you can be generous on Wednesdays and Fridays. And, of course, the prayer of the Lady of All Nations. I'm going to talk about that again. Uh, I want to thank the... Uh, hundreds of people throughout the world who have uh, requested this prayer. And we will get this uh, prayer uh, to you. Uh, we'll get it to you free of charge. For those who have ordered it, if you can uh, add a donation for uh, postage, fine. If you can't, don't give it two thoughts. You might give it one thought because we're getting we're well over 300 orders now, but uh, don't give it two thoughts because it's not about the mammon, it's about the prayer. If you call us and ask for the prayer of the Lady of All Nations, you will get it postage is completely uh, inconsequential. But the point is, we need this conversion, and we cannot expect, as we are clear uh, in light of what happened on Easter, we can't expect this uh, as in Nineveh from the, from the top down. It's got to be from the bottom up. We've got to take this to heart. So once again, did something catastrophic happen on April 8th? Surely it could. I think the odds are slim because the sign is given so that we can have a conversion of heart and we can be evangelizers of a conversion of heart uh, so that this message uh, of our need to do reparation for Christians in our country and all people of goodwill in our country to return to God and family and faith, which are the foundations of the United States. Now, for some who might think, well, I, I just think uh, all of this is kind of out of whack. I don't... Uh, See uh, why there might be a need for mercy in our country. Uh, and even this idea of a global, you know, we talked about in both the first and second segments on solar, uh, the solar eclipse in Mary, uh, this connection between Fatima and the reported apparitions in Amsterdam and Akita. Fatima reveals the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, but also speaks about challenges in the process, including the annihilation of nations. The reported apparitions of Amsterdam, which are separated by 28 years. We talked about this lunar cycle as we're talking about Mary as the moon. Um, 1917 to 1945. 1945 begins the Amsterdam, the reported Amsterdam apparitions, uh, always being obedient to the December 30th, 2020 a bishop statement on that, even though it had been approved for 18 years and spread throughout the world. But there's the call for a fifth Marian dogma as a principal mediator, uh, principal mitigator, excuse me, mitigator of chastisement as a means by which we can obtain peace. In fact, in the reported messages, it is a condition, the proclamation that Mary is the spiritual mother of all humanity is a condition for the triumph of the Immaculate Heart. And then we go to Akita, Japan, church-approved apparition, where, uh, in fact, uh, Our Lady talks about fire falling from the sky, a great part of humanity 
being lost uh, and reference to a new flood. Uh, and some would say, well, that's just, okay, prophet revelation, uh, I just don't, I don't buy it. Okay, well, let's, let's, let's go to the magisterium for a moment. Uh, I want to read to you from St. John Paul II's uh, encyclical on divine mercy. Listen to the words of the vicar of Christ, not just an individual prophet, although John Paul was, was both, I think, prophet and pope, but listen to his words about the possible need for mercy in our age, and if we don't respond in mercy, uh, what we can expect in justice. He says, and I'm going to uh, skip around here just a little bit, he says, quote, modern man feels threats. What has been said above in regard is only a rough outline. Modern man often anxiously wonders about the solution to the terrible tensions which have built up in the world and which entangle humanity. And if at times he lacks courage to utter the word mercy, or if in his conscience, empty of religious content, he does not find the equivalent, so much greater is the need for the church to utter his word, not only in her own name, but also in the name of all men and women of our time. Like the prophets, let us appeal to that love which has maternal characteristics and which, like a mother, follows each of her children, each lost sheep, even if they should number millions, even if in the world evil should prevail over goodness, even if contemporary humanity should deserve a new flood on account of its sins. One more time. This is no uh, private revelation. This is St. John Paul II. Even if contemporary humanity should deserve a new, quote, flood on account of its sins, as once the generation of Noah did. Uh, let us implore God's mercy for the present generation. May the church, which, following the example of Mary, also seeks to be spiritual mother of mankind, express in this prayer her maternal solicitude, and at the same time her confident love, that love from which is born the most burning need for prayer. If any of our contemporaries do not share the faith and hope which lead me as a servant of Christ and steward of the mysteries of God to implore God's mercy for humanity in this hour of history, let them at least try to understand the reason for my concern. It is dictated by love for man, for all that is human and which, according to the intuitions of many of our contemporaries, is threatened by an immense danger. St. John Paul II, speaking about a new flood, uh, really in total parallel with Our Lady's message of Akita. Uh, a, a, a call for humanity to realize our direction of rejecting God rejecting his moral teachings, rejecting his very being, uh, and rejecting his creation in the, in the form of, of, of abortions, uh, will call forward for justice. Now, we also have mercy, once again, which is this existential cry from the sacred heart of Jesus to our heart saying, please, I've already paid for this. This is already yours. This is your inheritance simply claim it. And, and some perhaps fear this, or they think that their sins are so significant individually that it, it, it's beyond the mercy of God. Well, let's now listen to St. Faustina recording the words of Jesus. So Jesus to Faustina uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a dialogue with a soul who thinks that somehow mercy is not for them, or that they've sinned too much. Jesus says, my mercy is greater than your sins and those of the entire world. Who can measure the extent of my goodness? For you, I descended from heaven to earth. For you, I allowed myself to be nailed to the cross. For you, I let my sacred heart be pierced with a lance. Come then with trust to draw graces from this fountain. I never reject a contrite heart. Your misery has disappeared in the depth of my mercy. Do not argue with me about your wretchedness. 
You will give me pleasure if you hand over to me all your troubles and griefs. I shall heap upon you the treasures of my grace. Child, speak no more of your misery. It is already forgotten. Listen, my child, to what I desire to tell you. Come close to my wounds and draw from the fountain of life whatever your heart desires. Drink copiously from the fountain of life and you will not weary on your journey. Look at the splendors of my mercy and do not fear the enemies of your salvation. Glorify my mercy. That's our sweet Jesus. That's the Jesus that's trying to bring forward grace as the ultimate instrument of conversion. We can't do this on our own. We need our Lord. And so, with due attention to April 8th, do not forget April 7th, the Feast of Divine Mercy. And in the Diary of Faustina, many of you are familiar with this, but for those perhaps that uh, are not, and and it's it's good for us to renew this awareness and, and the conditions for this This mercy, which Jesus says, even the angels, the angelic mind, can't completely fathom. It's so extraordinary. So Jesus says, My daughter, tell the whole world about my inconceivable mercy. I desire that the Feast of Mercy be a refuge and shelter for all souls, and especially for poor sinners. On that day, the very depth of my tender mercy are open. I pour out a whole ocean of graces upon those souls who approach the fount of my mercy. The soul that will go to confession and receive Holy Communion shall obtain complete forgiveness forgiveness of sins and punishment. On that day, all the divine floodgates through which grace flows are open. Let no soul fear to draw near to me. Let, Let no soul fear to draw near to me, even though its sins be as scarlet. My mercy is so great that no mind, be it of man or of angel, will be able to fathom it throughout all eternity. Everything that exists has come forth from the very depths of my most tender mercy. Every soul in its relation to me will contemplate my love and mercy throughout eternity. The feast of mercy emerged from the very depths of tenderness. It is my desire that it be solemnly celebrated on the first Sunday after Easter. Mankind will not have peace until it turns to the font of my mercy. So here we go. You see, we're, we're, a, we're not an either-or church to be Catholic. We're a both-and church. We acknowledge the reality of God's justice, but we emphasize, as he desires us to, to focus on his mercy, to, to take advantage, to receive into our hearts the mercy that comes from the blood and water pierced in the sacred heart of Jesus and this remarkable feast. So once again, what is required to be returned, as he says in another message, to be returned to baptismal purity? My friends, I I say this honestly. Sometimes we try to categorize our Lord's infinitude of mercy and love into preset categories. And look, that's fine. That's what theology and canon law does. This is beyond a plenary indulgence. This is a plenary indulgence on steroids. This is returning you and me, our souls, if we receive Holy Communion and confession on Divine Mercy Sunday or in its proximity, I'll mention that in a second, we'll be returned to baptismal purity That means any sin that we have done, and even one ponders, at least in my case, I ponder the weight of the sin I've done even since last Divine Mercy Sunday. And I said, and I I have to say, I praise you, Jesus, that once again, that you're you're going to relieve not only the eternal punishment, but the temporal punishment of the sins of the last year, even since last Divine Mercy Sunday, and more, and bringing me bringing my soul to the state of baptismal purity. So, my friends, this is a no-loss and no-brainer opportunity of untold mercy. When Jesus says angels and human minds can't fathom it, uh, it's true. But let's certainly take advantage of it. So, what does it mean? It means receiving the Eucharist 
this year, Sunday, April 7th, in the state of grace. Now, our Lord specifies confession. Uh, now, some churches, some wonderful pastors, make confession also available on Sunday of Divine Mercy Sunday. So you can have the great one-two punch together. Well, that's fantastic. Uh, and, it's, and it's a true, I think, a fullness of what our Lord's asking in, in the sense of, you know, again, generous pastors who understand the nature of this promise. But it's also important to, to know that it's not obliged to have confession on Sunday. How do we know? Well, because confession was not available to Faustina uh, when uh, she lived and fulfilled the requirements for Divine Mercy Sunday. So she went to confession the Saturday before. So it's always a beautiful thing to uh, to have the confession before Holy Communion so you can receive conf uh, our Eucharistic Lord in the greatest possible state. Of course, if you're not in uh, sanctifying grace, that's a requirement, of course. You, you, you have to go to confession before reception of our Eucharistic Lord on Divine Mercy Sunday to get this in untold grace. But for those who don't have uh, confession available before, uh, or excuse me, on the same day, then certainly go the Saturday before. For the plenary indulgence, it can be 20 days in either direction of Divine Mercy Sunday. But I would gently encouraged to have confession as soon as, as close to divine mercy sunday as possible once again if we're not if we, we believe we're not in grace we want to receive the sacrament of reconciliation uh, before uh, divine mercy sunday but once again my friends yes do i believe that a chastisement is coming i do because you can't not believe that and believe the major Marian messages to the modern world. Fatima. Uh, again, I would hold the reported apparitions of Amsterdam, which are presently in a non constat, not, not a constant non, not a condemned, but a, a middle category, not approved. Uh, Akita is completely approved. Um, I also believe in the reported apparitions of Garibandal, uh, which Padre Pio was a great advocate that also speaks about not only warning, uh, a God-given illumination of conscience, but also a, uh, a very significant chastisement for the world. And that's why we want to respond to the mercy. St. Faustina is very clear in, in what Jesus tells her. There will be a time of justice. Uh, before that is the time of mercy. We, we have to spiritually carpe diem. Let's take that to heart now. And ultimately, again, what is April 8th? It's the Feast of the Annunciation. Remember, God made redemption in a real sense dependent on the yes of one woman, an immaculate woman, but a human being. And, and that's Our Lady. St. John Paul II says, the Heavenly Father entrusted himself to the Virgin of Nazareth. Isn't that phenomenal? In what sense? How could God entrust himself to Mary? Because God the Father chose in his perfect providence to make the word becoming flesh conditional on the yes of a woman. And that woman said yes. And that woman is the human co-redemptrix, the mediatrix of all graces, the advocate. And that proclamation for the Holy Father to declare this is once again a condition for global peace. So let's be about praying for that as well. As I've done each time, oh, a little faster because I'm using two hands. Usually I'm all over the place with this. There it is, the prayer of the Lady of All Nations. I strongly encourage you to uh, contact us to get this prayer. It's a 30-second prayer. It holds a tremendous power before the throne of God. It is asking Jesus to send the Holy Spirit into the hearts of all nations to prevent degeneration, disasters, and war through Our Lady as Advocate. What could be more theologically precise? What could be more pastorally and globally needed right now as we face the moral degenerations we've talked about in this program. Natural disasters like never before. War uh, is an obvious uh, potentiality in light of Russia, Ukraine, Israel, Palestine, China, uh, Taiwan, and the situation uh, with Iran in the Middle East. Pray the prayer, my friends. Pray the prayer. You can get it off Google if you want. Uh, you can also contact us. We'll send it to you free of charge. Uh, you can go to motherofallpeoples.com. 
go to that website, scroll to the bottom, and there'll be a place both for Spanish, uh, for English and Spanish prayer cards. Get them. Order 50. Pass them around to your friends. Pass them around to the people in your prayer group. Get 100 for, the, for, for your parish, obviously with the approval of your pastor. Be an evangelist for this prayer because I believe it's a prayer that not only prepares for the proclamation of the dogma, it's a prayer that can massively mitigate all the negative things we've talked about in this program. But let's always keep our faith and trust in our Lord's infinite mercy in Our Lady's role as the Mediatrix of Mercy. Let's pray for our Holy Father for the proclamation of the Fifth Marian Dogma. And let's do our part to bring His infinite mercy into the world through our own very imperfect, humble hearts. Uh, and that pleases the Sacred Heart, the Merciful Heart, the Eucharistic Heart of Jesus so very much. So let's end by praying the prayer of the Lady of All Nations. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the Father, send now your Spirit over the earth. Let the Holy Spirit live in the hearts of all nations, that they may be preserved from degeneration, disasters, and war. May the Lady of all nations, the Blessed Virgin Mary, be our advocate. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Again, go to motherofallpeoples.com if you want free copies of the prayer card. Or you can email mary at motherofallpeoples.com. Just put your name and address, how many prayer cards you want. Thanks for being with us. And let's thank God for his infinite mercy, his constant love, true signs that he gives us through his mother and our mother to help us return and live the fullness of the gospel. God bless you all.